Now, it should have been the natural language of artificial intelligence. So what happened to Prologue? I was thinking about that recently, and I did a bit of research, and I found it still being taught at universities. But if you look on, for example, all the AI applications, chat GPT, and you ask it what programming languages is it written in, well, Prologue doesn't feature. I even asked, why not? And it gave me a whole load of reasons why it's not using Prologue. And you can ask the same for um, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, or um, Grok. Uh, you find similar answers. So what was the great fuss about Prologue? Well, I remember back in the 1980s, I was really quite uh, excited by Prologue, as a lot of people were. We thought it was going to be the language of artificial intelligence. It was the way that programming would be done in the future. Uh, here's an example. This is from a book called, well, it's called Pro, uh, Prologue Programming for Artificial Intelligence. And this says really what uh, the author thinks uh, about the languages. He says, in the Middle Ages, knowledge of Latin and Greek was essential for all scholars. The one language scholar was necessarily a handicapped scholar who lacked the perception that comes from seeing the world from two points of view. Similarly, today's practitioner of artificial intelligence is handicapped and is thoroughly familiar with both Lisp and Prologue. Uh, Lisp is another artificial intelligence, well, it was considered to be an artificial intelligence language, which um, was very big back at the time. Uh, here's another one, Prologue, Programming and Applications, again, from about the same period. Since 1980, worldwide interest in the fields of artificial intelligence, knowledge processing and expert systems has increased. The spread of ideas associated with these subjects has been furthered by the announcement of the Japanese fifth generation computing initiative. Now, that is another thing we heard a lot about in the, in the 1980s, this Japanese project. I had to look it up on Wikipedia to find out what happened to it. Again, this was going to be programmed in Prologue. Um, simple answer is it didn't live up to hopes and expectations. So as a result, we now have AI flourishing apparently in the modern world, uh, but Prologue is not one of the principal languages. Prologue itself though is still a really interesting language. Uh, why were people so obsessed with it? Well, it was very, very different from the standard procedural or indeed object-oriented languages that you're probably now familiar with. Instead of just calling functions, you would define facts and rules. And a fact might be something like, um, Mary is a woman, um, Mary is a parent, and then you'd have a rule. Um, a mother is a woman who is a parent, and so you could find if Mary and Anne met that cri those criteria, then that, that query would return those facts. So you could put together facts and rules and issue queries and allow Prologue to go and find the uh, all possible solutions to those queries. And they could be quite complex queries. They could be natural language processing, where you're defining what a noun phrase is and a verb phrase and sentences are made up from noun phrases and verb phrases and so on. So the applications of Prologue were thought to be things like natural language processing, um, navigation, map finding, route finding, uh, all sorts of game playing, chess playing, and so on. And Prologue came from the, the attempt to uh, create a logic programming language. That's what it means, programming in logic. And so it was based on predicate calculus, which I know precious little about. And so that's why it w was done in this way, instead of the, the more mundane programming way of functions that you used to, you would have predicates or rules and so on. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why there was a great deal of reluctance from many programmers to use it. It was just so different. The other problem, I think, was that Prolog is very, very good at finding complex relationships between facts and um, rules and, and ways that facts can be put together to, to create, as I say, to define what a, a sentence is made up of or, or what sort of relationships family members have to one another. 
It has a problem though, is it keeps trying to return lots of information. So to stop it doing that, you have to do things like put in something called a cut character, which is a, an exclamation mark. And that means once you've found one answer, then stop. And I suspect in the modern world where everything has to be super fast and super efficient, the way that Prolog did a lot of searching for information which sometimes was not exactly what's required to answer a specific problem, again, had performance implications. So it's a bit sad, really. I mean, I quite, I quite like Prolog and it still exists and you can still use it, uh, but it's not a mainstream language. But I still really think it's well worth trying out because it is so interesting. You can download free editions. There's a, a SWI Prolog and there are various other uh, implementations. Uh, there's a commercial product which is very still being sold, uh, uh, Sixtus Prologue. And another interesting one is back in the uh, 80s, uh, late 80s, I think it was, Borland, who then were mainly known for, for Pascal, Turbo Pascal, launched something called Turbo Prologue. And that was a, a very strictly typed version of Prologue. It was a fast compiler that's non standard in Prologue. Um, but it, it it would be more efficient and, and faster. That um, pro product subsequently was developed into something called Visual Pascal from the Prolog Development Center in Denmark, who were the original developers. You can still download that. It's uh, available both as a free version and a um, commercial edition. And that's got a, a quite a good full programming environment for Windows, including visual design tools. And that again, while it's not a standard prolog, it is still well worth uh, playing around with. I really think prolog is such an interesting language. It's just worth getting to know. Now let's have a quick look at a, a short sample of how you might write and query a prolog program. Here's a simple program that I wrote earlier in Prologue. This is not intended to be a tutorial, it's just a very simple example of uh, an actual short program. It's a simple adventure game, so I've got facts up here, and these state that a cave is a room and it's got north, south, west or east. The underscore means that it's undefined. Uh, if it's got a name, then it means that that's the room or the location in that direction. And then there are various rules down here. This means north if this is the uh, this symbol here. And you can go north if you can get the position and there's a room with an exit that's instantiated. That is that the variable has some value. I'm not going to go through it all, but that's essentially how it works. Let me just show you how I would run it. So I'm at the prologue prompt. This is SWI prologue. I load my prologue program in this way. And now I can actually start querying. So I can do a simple query like what is a room? And I put room and then I put name. This is going to be uh, instantiated. This is going to take on the value of the name variable and then north, south, west, east. And it will go and search for anything that matches any facts or rules that return some information uh, relating to that query. So I, and it finds straight away there is a room with the name cave and the uh, instantiated values are south and east. Now there's more to come, so I can get the next result by pressing the semicolon. And now you can see there's also a forest. And so it's going through all the uh, facts that match that query. And now I can go on and navigate the game. Um, first of all, I need to initialize it. I've got an init predicate, a init rule. So it tells me I'm standing in the cave and I can try going north and it says no exit. I can try going south and it says I moved to Glade. Here's a problem though, because there's more than one solution to, to going south. So I press that and it says there's no exit. Well, that's not what I want. I want uh, if the uh, player goes south, obviously there is an exit. So what do I do? I have to put a cut in here. So cut is this character save it, reload my game, game two, init, try going south again. And this time it succeeds on the first uh, rule, that is on the uh, this rule up here, 
And because there's the cut, this character here, the second rule, that's this one down here, does not execute. So that's one of the things that you have to look out for with Prolog. It really wants to find as many solutions to a query as it possibly can. And sometimes you have to tell it one is enough, stop. And that's one way of doing it by adding this cut character. And this is the book that I really learned Prolog from. It's uh, there's an, a newer edition than this. This is the second edition. Uh, Programming Prolog by Cloxin and Mellish. If you're interested in standard or Edinburgh syntax Prolog, um, then that's the book to, to really start with. At any rate, I hope you found this marginally interesting. It's an example of a language that at one time did seem to define the future of artificial intelligence, but uh, was overtaken by events, I suppose.